and then to the line. I think the projector is going to get a little brighter as it warms up. But yeah. other times we've had the, the windows were blocked. I know. Yeah. 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 Quite bright right now. That's all Can you leave these ones on just for a little nice. life? It's nice mood. Yeah, it does set the atmosphere nicely. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that's good. That's a little better. I can sing. <sighs> All right. I ask everyone to stand for Pledge of Allegiance. Red, you want to lead us? I will. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank here. Reg Carter. Here. Kurt Gerbich. Here. Abby Neusterher. Here. Tom Cosgrove. Here. Thank you. Um, tonight we are here to listen to three applications. 31 Macomb Street, historic site we did. 104 Bridge Street, historic site review. 15 Court Street Historic Site Review. Just acknowledge that, uh, unfortunately, our, our planning assistant is not able to attend tonight. Uh, she's attending the funeral of a passing family member. Uh, and Barb Rester is our senior clerk. And, she will be in the duties of the, the uh, staff. The first application is 31 McComb Street. Okay. Ask the applicants to step forward, please. Um, Rick, just to be on the record, I'm gonna recuse myself from this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Just as a, a point of order, um, as an applicant, you have the entitlement of a full board, um, which is five members. We have two members that are absent and one member that is excused for in your hearing. Um, you can either have your application heard by the four member share, which you still need three positive votes to affirm your request. Um, or you can wait until next month and you can have a full board. Yeah, come on. Okay. Um, can I ask you to state your names for the record and introduce the project, please? Sure. So my, my name is David Barber. And um, well, my wife and I have just moved into the, my parents' house at 31 McComb Street. 
And I'm Eileen Barber Allen, Dave's older sister, and I have title of the property at the moment. Our goal is to put on a side porch on the east side of the house to allow for egress from the second story and from the kitchen. Right now, the second story door is kind of high for getting in and out and causes many people to stress as they come around the corner on the street. And, um, and then the kitchen door, well, both these doors are bolted closed. The kitchen door is also um, does not have access to the outside because it needs stairs and a landing. Um, just go through the, <clears throat> the details. We, uh, we will be having a public hearing, uh, and there is a seeker that we will be voting on, which is um, the environmental review. At some point, there are two corrections here that I would like to make in the application. Okay. Is this an appropriate time? It's appropriate, yes. Okay, so in the, um, in the document to the planning board entitled staff report, under application analysis, section one, part three, it says there are side lights along the front door. Mm -hmm. That is incorrect. So I'm inside by assuming it's not going to. That's the first page of the staff report. It looks like it's. Are, are we all there? It's got a blue banner on it. Yeah. I'm also going to point out that on our Chris document, uh, it shows a picture of the house as uh, during the application process in the are not there as well. Yeah, I noticed that too. Yeah. It wasn't accurate. I think it'd be appropriate to uh, just strike that from our exhibits. Mm -hmm. It doesn't appear that um, it, it's entirely accurate. So. Okay. The other thing I'm concerned about is on the last line of the same page, the building inspector has noted that the upper level cannot be used as a livable space. But he may not have realized that that has always been a livable space since the building was built. So when we moved in there, there were tenants up there. And after my parents bought the house, that was frequently used as an extra bedroom and sitting area and little kitchen area as well. Okay. <clears throat> Just as a, a comment from the board, our jurisdiction ends at the Side of the building mm -hmm. line. We we are not here. We uh, to make a determination yeah. whether that's habitable space or living space. I understand through the through the building permit process. Um, our obligation is to make it clear on the record that through the remainder of the process, you'll have to identify your your argument to the building inspector that you want to maintain the. Habitability of the second floor. Okay, and that's clear in the documents. I just wanted to be sure that I spoke up when I saw it. It's, it's very important to do that. Yes. And if throughout the course of our discussion you want to interject, just you know, let us know. Our, our goal is to be accurate and well, make sure that the, the record is complete. There's, are you familiar with the MLD uh, comment as well? Yes. Okay. Um, and can I you mention that what we had measured it is not three, the door is not three feet from the car. So it's just, just a little bit three feet. Um, we want to put a window in there. 
if it was acceptable, we'd make that window not open. So just a single window that doesn't open, if that would meet the requirements. We would like a window there because it's facing the lake and it's such a light. I was wondering if it would be acceptable to MLD if they were just to move that connection a foot down the ridge line of the roof to make it further away from the door. So we could, in other words, we could work with MLD and the sure. building inspector's office yeah, and our right. contractor to, yeah. to have something that meets their needs, our needs too. Yeah. Um, it, it would certainly be appropriate. You know, it's, we don't have that that uh, jurisdiction or authority to, to grant that. Um, <clears throat> however, I don't believe that MLD uh, provides that service because where the weatherhead, the, the line connects to the line that comes from the pole, that's typically the, the point that they uh, are responsible for. Okay. And so you'll have, you may want to have that discussion with them again and they, application process. We uh, really appreciate the, that comment in here because that's something we would not know about that commentary. It's absolutely a safety issue. Absolutely. I believe mm -hmm. my brother probably um Did, did you want to add anything more? No. Um, we have a general idea of what we're looking at for the porch. We want to do what was originally there because it's just such a huge eyesore. <laughs> but it, and you know, something neat um, that fits the building and it's uh, so practical. That's kind of an off the record question. Uh, did, did your dad ever conclude the Mosher Motor Works? Oh. Uh, yeah. I, I was the building inspector when he was. Oh there. my oh. gosh, what, a, yeah. what an awful headache that was. <laughs> yes, yeah. I think they uh, just terminated everything and didn't, uh, decided not to take down the condominiums. Right? And then just they just. Uh, Ended it where it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. without without fines to either side. Yeah, yeah. 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 The the Lozier Motor Works they made uh, steam generated vehicles, and George had a claim yeah. claim to the to yeah. the vehicles. Cool. It's very cool. Very. Mm -hmm. I wish that we had more discussion on that part of Plattsburgh history. Then. Oh, I know. It, I it know. was. Uh, it was. Pretty exciting. Whenever we take students on field trips and we go by there, I tell them about Lozier Motor. I don't tell them about my dad's conflict. They didn't want a Ferris wheel out there. I didn't, I didn't mention that to them. Uh, does anyone have any questions? No. no. In terms of the, the actual construction uh, project, other than the, the window that's going to be a your request to have in place um, with the stationary, do you have, um, can you replicate the window by appearance that's there to make on the opposite side just to maintain consistency with the I would think so. We'll, we'll try uh, with the um, with the distance. It makes it a little bit hard, but we've got uh, somebody uh, that's a very creative yeah. builder, and us so, also appreciates. Our friend that is going to do the work contracts with bowls for uh, windows and doors, and he orders doors and windows and have them custom made. So it's it certainly would be doable. Yeah, yeah, that'll keep the property, you know, consistent. Yeah. With You're money. talking about having that horizontal, like putting a mullion so it looks like a double hung. Even yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see what, yes, yeah. Yeah, so yeah we can easily do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> and the other question you're going to want to follow up with building inspectors does that diminish or decrease the amount of natural ventilation to the point that um, it, it may or may not be uh, doable? Yes, that's a great question. Yes, we will take that up with him. Yeah. 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 I, uh, I think uh, definitely on the door by having it on the uh, north side of the chimney, we'll have um, um, uh, a movable screen. We'll have a storm door mm -hmm. there with a screen and uh, window because there a lot of weather hits that side of the house that's very exposed. So I, I think uh, it's very important to have air coming in there, whether it's a door, preferably with a window as well. And, and those windows on the doors, uh, we're looking at them recently, they're 50 inches high, about 36 inches wide, and then they open mm -hmm. uh, quite a bit. So there's, there's quite a bit. Of and I would ask the same with the door. If you, if the replication can carry um, the steam, yeah. I think that that would be consistent okay. with the project. Yeah, I'd like it to look better than the door that is now there because it's pretty. <laughs> yes, I think that's the those are reasonable. Okay, but it, is it true that putting in a, a window that will not open is an alternative to the possibility of? Relocating the uh, electrical service. That would be practical to relocate yeah. electrical. I just don't know if the feasibility of uh, practicality. So there's two possibilities at this point. We just don't know what the final outcome is going to be. Right. Yeah. And I wasn't clear on where the kitchen door is. It's bolted it's, it's around the back of the house. So if you have, if you have this photo, yeah. it's on. Uh, so okay. here's a chimney. It's just to the it's just to the right. It's, it's kind of in shadow. But the, the corner of the house to the north of the chimney on the first floor is the kitchen. The smaller window on the first floor is the kitchen. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, so the kitchen door is about what would that be about six feet? Yeah, I think it's higher than that. Okay. It's the second, if you're looking at the uh, image from the true side of the house, it's the second smudge to the right <laughs> on the back side. Got it. Thank you. Okay, so, and on, on these, uh, on the top image, David is the second one to the right. I can see it. Yeah, that's good. Launch of the model. Good to move on to the seeker. The seeker is a short environmental assessment form. If you're not familiar with it, and I will be reading 11 questions to the board members. Uh, there's two choices. The first one is no or small impact may occur. And the other choice is moderate to large impact may occur. If there's no response, we'll just assume that it's no or small impact. May is, occur. Am I to respond or no, the, the board? board, the board okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, number one, will the proposed action create a material conflict with an adopted land use plan or zoning regulations? Will the proposed action result in a change in the use or intensity of use of land? Will the proposed action impair the character or quality of the existing community? Will the proposed action have an impact on the environmental characteristics that caused the establishment of the critical environmental area? Will the proposed action result in an adverse change in the existing level of traffic or affect existing infrastructure for mass transit, biking, or walkway? 
Will the proposed action cause an increase in the use of energy and it fails to incorporate reasonably available energy conservation or renewable energy opportunities? Will the proposed action impact existing public or private water supplies or public private wastewater treatment utilities? Will the proposed action impair the character or quality of important historic, archeological, architectural, or aesthetic resources? Will the proposed action result in, adverse, in an adverse change to natural resources, such, such as wetlands, wetlands, water bodies, groundwater, air quality, flora, or fauna? Will the proposed action result in an increase in the potential for erosion, flooding, or drainage problems? And will the proposed action create a hazard to environmental resources or human health? Okay, so we have a motion to make a declaration on the secret. I'll make that motion, Rick. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the CEQA associated with the project on 31 Macomb Street as having no environmental impact. Do I have a second? Second. Is that added? Yep. yep. <laughs> Roll call. Uh, Rick Perry? Yes. Reg Carter? Yes. Abby Musaher? Yes. Tom Cosgrove? Yes. At this point, um, I will open the public hearing. Um, it's um, there are no attendees. No attendees on No attendees. Um, does anyone have a comment? Mm -hmm. There being no comments. Um, the public hearing. <laughs> Do we have a motion on the application? Just that in the in, in the formation of. Um, of a motion, um, we should include some of the issues that we had talked about during the discussion period. Um, and we could have a motion. And that and those that criteria specifically would be what Rick. Um, the the replacement of the window and door would um, would look uh, what's the term period significant um, with the consistency of the of the materials that are being removed and, uh, in the house in general. It is as one issue. Um, the comment of the building inspector and of municipal lighting. One of our one of our tasks, according to Dean, is that we start formulating more detailed um, motions so that mm -hmm. the record is, is clear what our intent is. Okay, that's my Thank you. I could take a stab. Go ahead, Tom. I'm a little new at this, but um, uh, I'd make a motion to uh, uh, approve the draft resolution 2207B 
for 31 McClone Street. Uh, as it pertains to uh, constructing the two story deck with uh, the relocation of the second story window and exit door using period appropriate uh, detailing in line with the remainder of the house. Uh, would also add that um, any modifications should be approved by the building inspectors department, as well as in line with any recommendations from PMLD uh, so that uh, any safety concerns would be addressed. Very, did very well. Um, do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Rick Perry? Yes. Reg Carter? Yes. Abby Musiver? Yes. Tom Cosgrove? Yes. Your application has been approved. Congratulations. Thank you very much, and I appreciate your input. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, is it moved if you need? I just want to know that you want to know something you're saying. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Just need to recap. Everything from place. Yeah. Application number two is 104 Bridge Street. Got it right this time. Um, historic site review. Request to demolish existing. Detached garage on a parcel located within the Point Historic District, located at 104 3rd Street, zoned R2, text that parcel ID number 20720 2 3. I ask the applicants to approach and state your name and give us a description of your request. I'm Peter Hitchcock. And our uh, request is to demolish the garage. Uh, we bought the property a month ago. A couple months ago. A couple months ago. And we did not know it was an historic district. No. So uh, we were talking to a copy. Our contractors come in and uh, you know give us an estimate for taking it down. And said, well, maybe you should go over to City Hall and check. You know. How things are there, and we did. I couldn't find out, so we were surprised to say the least. But um, but the, the garage is in really bad shape. Oh yeah. And we would like to have it demolished. And uh, our intent is not to replace the garage. The intent is to make a green space. <laughs> it's a really small lot. It's like thirty feet wide. There's no green. You know, it's, uh, there's a lot of rental properties around the world. Black top, so we thought it would enhance things by making it green. Um, it's it is it's a, there's a tree behind it, a couple of trees behind it that have been they just let go and they've been pushing that garage over and over. And uh, the one that has actually grown into yeah, yeah, yeah. the garage, yeah, the tree has, yes, yeah. We were actually surprised to find a resident there. There was someone living there before we moved in, but uh, it was groundhog. <laughs> so I go to the garage, and all the concrete is like. Pushed up from, I don't know, from the tree root or from the, uh, you know. So, in addition to the structure being pushed over and into the neighbor's property, there's a tunnel system, I think. We didn't have them trapped, we moved. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> happy ending to that story. But, uh, yeah, the property's been, the property's been like a long time. So, we were hoping, really hoping to. One of, uh, my initial concern was that if in the future the next owner or two owners uh, after them ever wanted to reconstruct a garage on the site, I thought it would be a good idea to you know have some type of trail that, that identifies. You provided us with a very, very good, very good trail system that 
um, would enable someone to reconstruct very similar to the historic property that it is today. Um, we might add a, a comment was made that we you know, may want to look at some elevation shots as well. Just, yeah, what's on the yeah. I don't know what that means. So oh, uh, pictures of like each um, each side of the building, just kind of straight on. Okay. All right. We know one side is going to be a challenge. Yeah, you can't get it from one <laughs> yeah, side. Yeah. Okay. So but yeah, just. Would you just take pictures, send them to you? Send them to Shalice? Uh, yeah, they would, I, be sent, they would be sent to Shalice. Okay. So, yeah. so, so like, head, you're saying head on. Not above elevation. Elevation. Yeah, yeah, like a, your, all four. Yeah. All four sides, essentially, as okay, much as possible. Probably won't be able to get the fourth side. Oh, yeah, okay. Sure. okay. So just some more. That's easy. And any. Does the board have any? So I had a couple of questions. Okay. So one is, I'm curious if it seems like you'll probably have to go on the neighbor's property to take some one side down. I'm just curious if you have permission from the neighbor. You know, the, as far as we know, the you spoke with the contractors, like he was saying that it would, I don't, I don't know. But yeah, he, he said, well, the contractor said to take off that left side. But we're certainly okay. going to talk to our neighbor. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Plus, he has to put a, uh, it's a shared driveway. So, you have to put a, um, some sort of place for it. So, we'll be talking about it. Okay. But yeah, that's great. Thanks for the advice. Any reason to believe that there's asbestos or lead paint in the structure on, if it's been painted with lead paint or if there's asbestos in it? I don't know about that. I don't think so. Okay. No reason to believe it. Yeah. The, okay. the one window, there's no window in it. Okay. So it's, it's okay. Okay. And I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Will the tree come down? Yes. Tree's coming down too. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then the tree says palm chart. No, go ahead. Yeah, we talked to the uh, MLD. PMLD. MLD. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They came out because there was a cable in the back that got line that had mm -hmm. broke and no one had ever repaired it. So the the, um, the power of the utility pole was not on our property, but it's on the one next to us. Um, you know, guy, you know, Gil Dukin. Yep. Yeah, he's our neighbor. He's, <laughs> uh, but it's leaning, so the pole's leaning over, and that we had that guy fixed. So MLZ came up with that. But then they were going to send someone up to the trees. But I don't know if they did. The trees are, because, it is close to where the yeah. electrical pole is. Yeah. So we have had, <clears throat> we've contacted them about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they came out to the guideline, but I don't know. I don't know if they came out to the trees. We have talked to the tree person. Yeah. And the tree person said that I mean the, that he will have to work with the demolition process. Okay. In order to not right, because that tree is yeah. yeah. And it was a catch twenty two because we like we wanted to, the tree. He couldn't get in to get the trees because garage is in the way and our property is so narrow. Yeah. So. Yeah, okay. They got it worked out. Okay. As far as you know. Yeah. Okay. But we'll definitely talk to them. Good points, Kurt. Um, do we have any other comments, discussion? Anything more that you'd like to add? You know, can I just ask you a question? Sure. Because I'm not, you know, I don't know about this designation. What does R2 mean? R2 is a multifamily residential zoning district. Oh, okay. Um, the city is divided into, it's been a while, so <laughs> about eight different zoning districts. R2 is a designation that uh, multi-family housing, single-family housing uh, are uh, allowed permissible uses where if you wanted to, there are some special use permit required uses that would um, require you to get a special use permit like a zoning board. 
Um, and then there are some accessory type uses that are also permissible. Typically that's classified as like a parking area or not structure, but mm -hmm. an area on the lot that's accessory to the principal use. So we have R1, we have RH, then we have the businesses B1, B2, central business district, some industrial. So it's really pretty interesting. So, We have anything more? We do have a public hearing. Um, in public hearing is order correctly this time. So. Public hearing. Mark. Um, there are no attendees. We have no attendees. Comments. <laughs> <laughs> no additional comment from the public. Um, opposed to the public. And if the board puts um, can we have a secret discussion uh, in question? Okay. Okay, number one, will the proposed action create a material conflict with an adopted land use plan or zoning regulations? Will the proposed action result in a change in the use or intensity of use of land? Will the proposed action impair the character or quality of the existing community? Will the proposed action have an impact on the environmental characteristics that cause the establishment of a critical environmental area? Will the proposed action result in, in an adverse change in the existing level of traffic or affect existing infrastructure for mass transit, biking, or walkway? Will the proposed action cause an increase in the use of energy and it fails to incorporate reasonably available energy conservation or renewable energy opportunities? Will the proposed action impact existing public or private water supplies? Will the proposed action impact existing public or private wastewater treatment utilities? Will the proposed action impair the character or quality of important historical, archeological, architectural, or aesthetic resources? Will the proposed action result in an adverse change to natural resources such as wetlands, water bodies, groundwater, air quality, flora, or fauna? Will the proposed action result in an increase in the potential for erosion, flooding, or drainage problems? Will the proposed action create a hazard to environmental resources or human health? Motion on the seeker. Make a motion on the seeker 22 08 A. Uh, motion is a a move a negative declaration on the seeker. Correct. Mm -hmm. Do we have a second to the motion? Second to yeah. Roll call. Uh, Rick Carey. Yes. Reg Carter. Yes. Kurt Gervich. Yes. Abby Musaher. Yes. Tom Cosgrove. Yes. The, uh, so I entertain a motion on the application. Um, Adopt the project resolution 22-08B. Is 
So I'll, I'll make a motion to approve plan board application 22-08, uh, the Bridge Street Historic Site Review, uh, to approve the request to demolish the existing attached garage. Detached. Detached garage, thank you, um, at 104 Bridge Street with the one condition to include elevation photographs of the sides of the structure that you're able to get images of. And we should say the purpose here is if somebody were to reconstruct the garage and wanted to do it matching the historical features that they would have, uh, that they would, they, they would have an archive of that. Do we have a second to the motion? I'll second it. Do we have a roll call, please? Okay. Rick Perry? Yes. Reg Carter? Yes. Kurt Gervich? Yep. Abby Musinger? Yes. Tom Cosgrove? Yes. Your request has been approved. Thank you for your participation. Thank you. Thank you. Do you, do you have a, an approximate time frame that the approval letters take to generate? They're required to go out within one week. Um, I can use off of Shalise. She's going to probably do that midday tomorrow. Um, but the, the requirement is that they be done within a week. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. We have a third application. Existing attached garage in mudroom with new carriage house style design on the property located within the Court Street Historic District, located at 150 Court Street. Zoning district is RH. Parcel identification number is 07.19-5-18. Ask you to say your name. Sharon Sandra. In the description of your request, um, my request is to demolish um, a 1976 um, attached garage that was approved by the city of Plattsburgh. There is a building permit um, on file with the city, uh, so it was done through. Um, you know, through planning or whoever the board was at the time. It's in extreme disrepair. What we had intended to do, and I think you're all familiar with my larger package of doing the big house. Our original plan was to re-roof with the same roof angle as the historic structure to give it a little more historic integrity reuse the walls, the, the, the foundation, reuse everything and just re-roof the whole thing and do an exterior sort of a clat, cladding it in more of a mm -hmm. Victorian style, carriage house style. So on investigation, the roof is rotted, the sills are rotted, the windows are rotted, the doors are rotted, the concrete is cracked. The, it's, it's just, it wouldn't even support new, any kind of new construction. Taking off the roof, the walls wouldn't support a new roof. Um, I have sent um, a plan. I don't know if it's an actual plan, but there is a diagram and a, a, a rendering of my plan 
uh, to reconstruct a brand new on the same foundation. I believe it's 20. I'm sorry, I just did a four day drive from Key West. So I don't have like all my stuff here. Um, we're going to use the same foundation. So exactly the same uh, 24 by 40 uh, and copy, replicate all the siding that's on the main house I think there was a question when I zoomed in about the um, the cedar freeze that's generally on a Victorian as a, like an escallop, whereas this one on further investigation is a beautiful diamond shape freeze, which we will copy, replicate that freeze around the garage, carriage house doors, um, triple window over the garage doors to match what's on the front of the house. The siding will be the same with clabbered. And I believe there is a material list there that Paul Golden has put together for me. We do have additional uh, packets over here that would give you access yeah, to what they are looking at. But Thanks. Yeah, this is fine. It's part of the package. Oh, pull it up. Oh, it's part of the package. Okay. Yep. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Can I ask you, can we go back just one step? Sure. You had mentioned the uh, dimension of 24 by Is it, 40. I believe it's 24. The garage itself says 24 feet by 24 inches. So. Oh, the plan I sent you, I had mentioned, it will be resized. So the exterior will remain the same, but it's going to be extended an additional 20 feet. It's currently a 24 by 40 garage. The, the only plan I could find online that I liked, that I thought would fit in nicely, um and and reflect the true character of the property so paul is golden um and he's drawing up plans now um apparently he's he said he's he can get them stamped but i said well let's call in an architect if, if the board wants us to and we're just going to extend the roof and the back wall, another 20 feet, but all the exterior and the front and everything will remain. So okay. That's so, sort of for uh, just for presentation purposes of what I intend. Will to that do. go from the William Street side back or will it go from what's called the Court Street side? No, it's from the William Street okay. to the neighbor on Court Street. And actually, I have here, I had a survey done, and this is very interesting. Um, there is a sense, and, and from, what it, from what it looks like, can I give this to you? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. I got um, a card for that. In looking at the property from William Street, this is um, a stopping fence. That's actually connected to this William, the, 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 the southeast corner of the garage. Why have an additional 10 feet? When you're coming down the street, that, that fence looks like it's the property line. It's not. I have an additional 10 feet. I've already contacted the owner of this property. I they have assumed all this time. Possibly, mm -hmm. they're pretty new owners also with college housing. And um, the property manager I spoke with said, oh yeah, well, we always just sort of mow them through our leaves up there. <laughs> <laughs> but just so you know, they're, I think we're well be within the setback line. If you'd like to just share this. So you'll see that dotted 
fence line attached to the southeast fence. corner of the garage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They've got this additional. Yes, yeah, she, she's, she's acquired from the fence 10 feet this mm -hmm. way. But you're keeping the same foundation. Oh, yeah, should, absolutely. Yeah, so but that is just in home. case you had a setback issue. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to clarify that with 10 feet, I'm mm -hmm. hoping there's no setback issue. Um, mm -hmm. But if the previous garage was approved on that foundation, would it sort of be logical that the same foundation could be used? Well, <clears throat> I'll give you my opinion. Um, if the garage were freestanding, it would follow an accessory structure regulation. Once a connection is made from the garage to the house and it's identified as the one room, it's now part of the principal structure. Okay. It's an attached garage that okay. previously may have been detached. I don't, I don't know. Well, so <laughs> that mud room <laughs> has no foundation. Okay. Kind of and someone it. put it in there for the kids to mm -hmm. hang up their backpacks and their coats coming in the garage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so on on that basis, I would say as a detached structure, your setback requirement is five feet. Okay. Whereas a principal structure, you have a requirement of 1025. Being on a on a corner lot makes it a little bit more complicated. Okay. So let's just say that it, it's legally conforming because it was pre-existing that the principal structure is intact along with your request at, at the okay. end. Mm -hmm. um, if the building inspector in his preliminary had no issue with it, it's not an issue with us. Okay. Yeah, and he hasn't, he's been, he's been in touch with us constantly yeah. and been by the property quite often. We're very excited. Um, I am anyway. <laughs> uh, we found last week in the dining room, taking down the plaster and leg, 1892 and 1892, 99 uh, pocket door hardware. Oh. And I was always looking at the, the underside of, of the archways there and in the living room, there are nail holes. Maybe they didn't do that in 1896. So when they took the plaster lens down, I was like, oh my gosh, look at that. So I had them take the molding and sure enough, the pocket is there. And on the other side is the little, the little latch hole. Mm -hmm. So uh, they'll be fabricating re replicate doors too. And it's one big one. It's like a barn door. It's not even like this. It's like one it's very cool. great big huge. So likewise in the living room, there was no pocket door, but it's the same trim that was put up. So I'm wondering if maybe there weren't French doors there or something. So I'm gonna have you all over when it's all yeah. <laughs> Sure, we would accept. <laughs> and you're welcome to walk through any time, really. It's, it's just spectacular what's going on with that house. It's, it's amazing. Okay, so currently the non the mudroom lacking a foundation that has that um, octagonal window. Someone sometime tacked that on to the original back hallway that they attached the garage to. So I think first came the garage attached to the back hallway, to the kitchen. Then they got rid of an exterior door that would have had a small staircase for the cook made. And they did a mudroom with just two brick walls with no foundation and plywood. So um, that I would like to get rid of and reinstall the original cook store with the small, if, like a, an exterior landing and staircase. And that would have been where the cook and the laundry girl, because they were never allowed past the butler's pantry. 
they weren't even allowed in the one we're going to. We've already been approved for the big back porch. So this would have been a small exterior door. For the, the poor girl who did all that wash, we have the wash tub in the basement too. It's very sad. <laughs> I'm a historian and this really gets me. I'm sorry, I just get very, uh, very emotional about it. So will you be reconstructing the Mulgrove connector or? Will no, not where that is. I'd like to get rid of that. It will create like a notch outside. And instead uh, where the hallway is, the hallway, will go into the garage with a laundry room, powder room. So just so I understand this, the, the new structure would be detached essentially. No, it's, it's still it ha half of the attachment will go. So it's I now, see. Okay. it's a wide, wide attachment. Okay. So this half is that one, that mudroom that's the western that half has no support whatsoever. Okay. So that will go, and instead it will be just a doorway from the kitchen to the garage, and then I'm cutting into the garage for the laundry room and powder room. So right. there will be a notch in the garage. Right, because the garage is the 40 feet deep. It's right. not wide. So what do you do with garage. that space? Yeah. Okay. So you're turning that into so I'm going to use that okay. through that hallway and, and do it'll be elevated because the garage is like four or five steps below. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. I think I see that now. Is the intent of the um, laundry and powder room uh, as an accessory to the main house? Yes, or? main house. The, Absolutely. The question uh, came up. Will you intend to occupy or create habitable space in the attic area above the garage? Not, not now. Um, my question to you is, since it's an attached garage, if there's an interior staircase that is 36 minimum wide and 6, 8 clearance, all the way up, is that an approved staircase if interior into the garage? I'm going to <clears throat> respond in a way that um, you may or may not agree, but the we are not here um, to interpret the building code nor the zoning ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, if we can identify a discrepancy in a testimony or a plan, we, we may make mention of it, but we are not the approving authority mm -hmm. for the question. If I, if I can legally do it, maybe I would like to rough plumb an electric below to ultimately, but I'm not saying I will. I got a big enough house as it is that I, frankly, my family's like, what are you going to do with it? And I said, I'm going to have a Victorian Christmas. And who doesn't want a Victorian Christmas? Um, but uh, if, if, if it happens, I don't see it in my lifetime. I don't, I don't see expanding. It's going to be storage for now. I would like to rough plumb and rough electric. In the event a future owner would come to you and say, I, you know, and also make whatever the building department says is a legal staircase, if any, at least make a plan for that. Um, but for the time being, absolutely not. And that can be part of my testimony today that no, I have I have enough on my hands with the big house. So to be clear, the, the question is not before us today. Um, there is a process that mm -hmm. the building inspector will have to- Right, oh, I, I, I totally understand. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, Paul mm -hmm. and I have talked and I said, I'm a firm believer, like, I, I think you all know I'm, I live in Key West. We have the Historic Architectural Review Committee, which is known as PARC. 
<laughs> they won't even let you, we can't have even colors we can't paint. They are extremely strict. We're in hurricane zones and we still have to have wood windows with mullions. We're not allowed to have impact windows, not allowed to have aluminum windows, not allowed. So I've been there. And so I know what the job you, you're doing and which is, you know, it's what you have to do. And this is a beautiful city. So I totally, I'm totally with the regulations. So it, just to let you I know. just wanted to point that we have limitation. In our oh, well, absolutely. And yeah, we, right. we don't I interpret the, the building code. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but I'm just trying to do whatever, whatever the board feels historically works. And I'm a an art historian and um, this is my love. So I'll do whatever it, whatever it is within your parameters. Personally, I think it would be appropriate to want to see more detail about that one room area. Okay, um, yeah. Especially if there's gonna be mm -hmm. any degree of modification. Okay. What, what will the, um, that connector look you know, like? What would it look like? Okay. And how, mm -hmm. does it, how does it fit between the garage and the, and the home? And I agree with you. I, I want to get an architect to come and design that whole, the back because there will be a new I'm hoping there will be a new door laundry room behind that extends into the garage and then the attached garage so it's basically a port you know like this because we're getting rid of that other measure <laughs> find it exciting you know that you're introducing it and it, I think as a historic site review we would be remissing our responsibility. Absolutely. I can get that to part you. Mm -hmm. I can get that to you. Yeah. Absolutely. A lot of talking. Does anybody else? Everybody agrees on what you were both just saying, you know, just to, uh, you know, maintain the historical integrity and all be assured that we're in agreement that uh, that goal is not true. And that aligns with what we have asked other applicants in historic districts to do, sure. right? To, to Absolutely. bring us Absolutely, I can get that, that to you. I'll detail. actually call an architect or a drafts person tomorrow and get working on that and get that to you ASAP. Mm -hmm. That being said, um, I feel it would be appropriate to delay the, the vote until okay. um, we have the documentation sure. and it can be evaluated. Um, Not at all. Questions. Mm -hmm. Do I have to wait for a complete other meeting in another month? Unfortunately, we're volunteers, and that's okay. the way the system's set up. That right. we need once a month. All right. Yeah. Okay. No, I totally understand. Um, did, I'm sorry. We that finished here. Travel. Does she <laughs> have? Does she have to wait to pull the demo permit and do the demolition, or just? This is for the approval of the new. That was going to be my question as well. Yeah. Before she can reconstruct, she would have to. Right. So is she waiting on our appro approval to even be able to start her demolition? Do you have yeah. any plans to start demolition in the next month? I'm just waiting for your go ahead. Yeah. I would, we would love to. We want to uh, order a container because the garage currently is storing our tools and workshop. And also, all my architectural molding is being bubble wrapped uh, to put into the container, lock container, all the mantles, the, all, every single piece of wood coming out of the house is being cataloged and wrapped mm -hmm. to go back in. So um, the sooner we can safeguard that in a container, rather than it's just right now, it's, it's just standing up against the walls. And anything can happen, you know? So, so I'm anxious to get that protected. Having my, it's just my opinion, but 
if she intends to um, keep any of that portion of the structure, mm -hmm. then it, somehow we're going to have to identify it if it gets removed. Um, oh. and, the, and the new plan isn't consistent with the vision that mm -hmm. the historic vision that might jeopardize some of her re ability to reconstruct. And that's that's where I would have a little bit of, mm -hmm. as, as far as the garage goes, I don't see any issue with that. Oh, you just want the mud, where it's connecting is what your issue is, right? Primarily. That's okay, I can that. get that to you real quick. Okay. Yeah. I can get that to you. Because that's a question for me too, because I'm visualizing it in my mind, but how is an engineer or an architect actually going to, you know, mm -hmm. solve the problem because of the lack of foundation, because of it's an old brick, two little brick little walls coming out. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. My husband ran out of gas. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Triple H. I don't know if that makes any sense, but her ability to reconstruct may be hindered if we allow the demolition of that mud room. Yeah, area. that's fine. I'll get that to you. I to right. And, you like know, this, I, this is going to be a two year project. And, and, I have to be really patient because you know there's a lot going on there. There's they um the upstairs hall bathroom has a bathtub twice the size of that table, and when they put it in, probably in the 30s, maybe the 20s, they poured six inches of concrete on the second floor of that house. So. The, the kitchen ceiling is like going like this. So now that tub, and, and it's cast iron. We're going to need you guys. I'll hire you all for the day. We're going to need lots of guys to get that tub out, out of there. Amazing. So, Rick, I'll, I'll make a motion to table application. Oh, golly, where'd the number go? That's the. Personal. 2209. Thank you. I'll make, I'll make a motion to table application 2209 pending further architectural detail from the applicant on the connecting structure between the garage and the primary, between the, the accessory structure and the primary structure. Is that just the exterior? Do you want floor plan also? Interior floor plan and exterior? I would going back to you know, what you may have heard about the, the garage. We, we want to see an elevation that shows the flow between. The okay, and, we can do that. Um, okay, yeah. that's and we're not okay. as concerned about the, the construction of the rather the Just historic the, significance. Sure. That it's going to bring. Okay. But I would. Go ahead. No, I would add to. I I would add to the detail that we would like, or that I would like to see. I guess, and we're in a motion now, kind of constructing it. So I would add this into the motion. Um, details on the siding, the the wood siding, the gable accents, the trims, and the windows, and just how those will will either match or be compatible with the architectural features of the primary structure? Um, I, I have uh, on the application, and unfortunately, I, they're not printed, but um, web links mm -hmm. to, there's a company called Colby, which is custom, uh, custom windows, that mm -hmm. all the windows will be matched. Mm -hmm. um, the windows will be matched. The siding is uh, where it's called. Maybe it didn't get. No, it's, it's uh, this. Yeah. This yeah. Is yeah. Yeah. Are you, you're um, talking about like mock ups, not necessarily links to them. To cor the correct. Correct. Oh, because we. Need actual photo. Photos. Either what's on elevation. Yeah. Yeah. Drawn elevation of, okay. of, of, uh, of the garage, of your concept garage, but on the 20 by. 24 by 40 okay. elevation. What yeah. that looks like. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's what you mean? Yeah, sure. 
Yeah. With and like the doors, the actual windows I'm going to use, the doors. Yeah, the architectural okay. accents and things sure. like that. We yep. have spent a lot of time going over those details with other applicants, reconstructing oh, totally and building understand. in the same uh -huh. in the same neighborhood. Was the was the um, I'm not clear, but was the that connector? So so the garage was built in '76, and mm -hmm. when was the historical um, with, with Chris or the? Oh, was, when was that done? I mean, I know this garage is not historically significant. I, I'm curious then when that connection was made. Seventy nine, seventy nine stamps. Yeah. I was looking at the standards for here rehabilitation. Yeah. I saw you looking at those two, yeah. Kurt, where it's in that the staff report yeah. recommends treating this as a rehabilitation. Yeah. And it number 10 says new additions and adjacent or related new construction will be undertaken in such a manner that if removed in the future, the essential form and integrity of the historic property and its environment would be unimpaired. But I feel like it's already been impaired by the connection well, this of is, that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. That that, that is that not silly window. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. And look underneath. That's the foundation. Yeah. Plywood. Yeah. A plywood foundation. That is. It's attacked on. Yeah. A bomb. Right. It's already been kind of impaired. So then your at charges. At least, at least the they addition, went to the trouble of matching the sign. Yeah. It's. Yeah, I'm interested in the second half of nine. Also, right. Yeah. The new work will be differentiated from the old. And will be compatible with historic materials. So I don't need those architectural features to match the primary structure, but they should be compatible exactly. and reflect the time period. Yeah, yeah. See how yeah. it yeah. okay. All right. Is there any more to the motion you want to add after that? Or we're good with motion to table. Yeah, it's a motion to table. I'm okay. As long as the applicant understands kind of what oh, I yeah. think you do. Yeah. And, what, okay. uh, yeah. um, and I'm here until the end of September. Do we have a second to the motion? I'll second. Okay. Roll call, please. Rick Perry? Yes. Reg Carter? Yes. Kurt Gervich? Yes. Abby Musinger? Yes. Tom Cosgrove? Yes. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, can I a question? The previous applicant with the uh, Bridge Street property, he's taking down the garage. That I don't. The original house is, I know, is turn of the century, and that garage is seventies, the same as the garage I'm trying to get rid of, and. For historical, you have requested elevations of the existing garage so that if anyone rebuilds a garage, it, so does that mean that anyone who re rebuilds a garage can rebuild a 1976 garage instead of matching? Depends how it's known. Okay. When, when the, garage the garage built? Yeah, no, the garage, was, the garage was built and... And I don't think that this is turning this interest. Just know that it's not contributing. Yeah. It's oh. It's noted, but it's. Okay. Not so the garage was. Historic. Oh, okay. All right. I was just wondering. It's like, so what's the use? You know? Yeah. <laughs> what's the use if you're trying to do something historic? It didn't look at the So, yeah, basically, it's the same as what we're asking you. You know, that we, our record is complete. And if somebody were to ever come back and yeah. question, or if a future owner were to find a future board and none of us were here, would they be? Would it look as though it was a contributing structure? I didn't have those elevations. Yeah. And, and you get from well, um, I'm going to be calling a address person or an architect in the morning and try to get. Well, it says that. when that. You want to see how that it whole it there. Oh. elevation. Connects to the garage. Yes. You want and to what see the whole thing's going to look like. What it's going to look like. Okay. See for time. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Have Good luck. Nice evening. You're going to roll, right? Yeah. How would I do?
But did, sure. does it say when the, the, <laughs> if there was a permit for that garage? Know, if there's I a permit, it, then it would have been in the 70s. I thought it did. So the, the last item I think was that was it. I was under the impression yeah. it was older than the 70s. Um, I thought somewhere it did say there was a permit, but maybe that was on the. The, that was on this that was one. On this, this, one. this one had yeah. a permit I think old in 80. The garage on um, Macomb was older than the permit. You know, than the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was my discussion yeah. about the whole registry. And yeah. I, I always thought it was odd that, you know, we pick a period of time and then say, well, what did it? look like before then or mm -hmm. you know at, at what point does it become a historic document or mm -hmm. a complete registry it's i still try to formulate that in my mind yeah. it's, you know you know it's interesting because that inventory and i don't know if this is technical or not identifies a garage as an outbuild mm -hmm. so does that say by definition it was detached and the area that she's talking about, the mud room, was constructed sometime after that. Yeah. It sounds yes. like it. Yeah. You think? Yeah. 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 That's already yeah. 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 I think so. so it in the 80s. Well, they said that the application, it, the historic application is from 78. It's approved in January of 79. And the owner tells us that the, the mud room was built in 80, I guess. But so, all so five. yeah, I guess it would have been one right after the other, which is why it wouldn't have been identified maybe on the um, the registry. Interesting. Yeah. Um, we have. Let's see, are these items here? The bylaws are in effect. No. Oh. I don't know that we have a copy of the. Finalized bylaws. But the council passed them. The council did pass them on May 2nd. Um, yeah, I think that, that covers everything. Yeah. I know we went through things relatively quick, and I, I really like the introduction of the project coming from the applicant mm -hmm. rather than us doing the introduction of the project. Um, and I know it leaves a few things out and I just hope that the record reflects all the documentation that went into, you know, the hearing and what we base our opinions on. So <clears throat> maybe in the future, maybe I'll even remember oh, that we should note that the, the documents are part of the, the scheduling that goes into a complete record. I don't know if it's if it's done that way now, but um, if we change our formatting, maybe it's a good idea to have that part of it, have a line in there that identifies documentation as part of the record. A line in in the motion you're saying in the resolution like in, in the motion or the resolution if we're if we're adopting the so, resolution that's mm -hmm. prescriptive okay yeah, i think if the resolution is complete we don't have to restate every aspect of that resolution right i right. think we only have to state exceptions to perhaps when we call for a motion to approve yeah is that a fair summary it's it's a fair summary i, I think requesting that the documents that uh, are the basis of our part of the basis of our decision be noted in the resolution, resolution I agree. Yeah. and then it is complete, and it is complete. Yeah. are you talking about in in this in this kind of resolution document yes so i have a so I would feel more confident taking a stab at making the like moving things, but is there like an official like order or format? Like I'm trying to glean it from listening to others, but like, is there a resource somewhere I could use as a reference if I wanted to have like a kind of a fill in the blank template or format? 
I would from say my mind. <laughs> if, if you went to the New York Planning Federation mm -hmm. uh, website, they are a, a very good resource. Mm -hmm. um, it, a lot of good publications came mm -hmm. out of there. Yeah, I, I did the like first like intro to being on a planning board mm -hmm. webinar that they had as like my one of my first like education things. But, I mean, that was just very general, like what is this job? <laughs> planning Federation, you said, Rick? New York Planning Federation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the planning good. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Is that or do we have any more discussion? Sorry, I should have asked that first. Well, I, I was something I've just been thinking about, and I plan to do a webinar on Secra, so I better understand that. But I noticed all the questions, I mean, it's all about, and it's nothing in our control, it's like this other thing, but all the questions are about doing, are you doing no harm? But nothing actually is like, are you doing good? Like, like the, the Macomb that was taking down that garage, their whole thing was like, look, we're gonna like get rid of pavement and plant a garden and bring trees. And it's like, it's like, but but like that's not, there's no official way to like evaluate and kind of give them credit for that. It's like, no, they're not reducing infiltration. No, they're doing the opposite of it. You know, I think, just think it's interesting that our bar is like, do no harm. It's not holding projects to a bar of like, are you improving the environment? Are you improving ecosystems? And it's funny that because that. when when you go to these planning federation websites, they tell you when you make motions, they should be in the positive, just like you're saying. Yeah. You should never you should never introduce a motion that's in the negative. But isn't that something that could be yeah. captured in the resolution? Is to identify the contribution of this being made to the community, whether sure. it's environmental or some other aspect. Yeah, and that yeah. we should just we should commend applicants when they're doing that, that and that commend. goes in the minutes. Yeah. And yeah, yeah and yeah. That's, yeah. A That's a good point. Yeah. And I mean, even for the last applicant who's you know rehabilitating a dilapidated property the same in the same way. Yeah. It's not necessarily you know uh, air and water improvement, mm -hmm. but right. improving the quality of that historic district. Uh, with a property that's, you know, yeah, had been uh, abandoned essentially. Yeah. So that's that's an exciting project. Mm -hmm. I we walked by that house today. Incredible. They were working. I just wish it were easier for more people to have the means to to do this because. Mm -hmm. it, there's a very slim percentage of our population that could yes. mm -hmm. get involved in that project. Yeah. That's yeah. You know, honestly, it's one of the things about the historic yeah. renovation and preservation that you know, kind of bothers me that only a select few, I'm not going to call them select, only a few people can really partake in at the level that yes. we're looking at. That's, mm -hmm. But that may prompt other. Yeah, That's but nice. someone with um, the median income of Clinton County would never be able to. No, but I mean, there are people that do have, you know, the resources. Yeah. And they may not take it to uh, the level that we're discussing here, but I think hopefully it will prompt, you know, additional investment by people that live in those communities. Because some of those properties uh, are in dire need of just maintenance. And it, it's interesting because I've recently become involved with opportunity zones, which for investors, you have 1031 exchanges, but an opportunity zone, uh, there are very few. And actually, Court Street, Brinkerhoff are part of an opportunity zone. And opportunity zones get funding privately because it takes a capital gain to um, to invest in the opportunity zone, but you can open it up to other investors as well that have capital gains that they want to defer. And if you defer it for the first five years, um, you pay it at the end of five years. If you defer it for 10 years, you don't have to pay capital gains. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing what those zones can do as an alternative to a 1031 like kind of exchange. Mm -hmm.
So that's a good thing. Okay? It's a great thing. back to getting yeah. investors. Yes, that those areas need. But, but we for for the average person to get involved in a lot of projects like this, we need more creativity, like opportunities on these mm -hmm. these districts, broaden districts, and create other ways that people can invest mm -hmm. in historic properties. I think that's kind of a universal. Do you know the name of the story? That's you know, yeah, don't, you know yeah. your ranch or your old house. Yeah, I mean, it's not a story. <laughs> Kurt made a comment a couple of meetings back that you know he'd love for his kids to you know when they're adults to bring their kids to. That's cool. It really yeah. is. Just like to see them get into the renovation side of it. Mm -hmm. and more of those houses. They probably will. I'm just waiting for us to finish paying our student loans. So I don't have money to invest know, right? in a historic property, you know? Yeah. It's like we're still shackled to. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Them. Just, so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Awesome. I'll second that. All in favor? All right. Oh, All right. Have a good evening, everybody. All right. Thanks, Barbara. Thank you for calling. Nicely done.